Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mal and I'm the owner and maker of Made by Manny and Mal, wearing some new merch. If you want some new merch, you can get it linked down in the description. And I also have a free shipping code down there for you as well. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to be doing a highly requested tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to do a glitter buffalo check tumbler. And I'm gonna show you three ways to accomplish the final look. So I hope that you enjoy it. I hope it helps you. This is definitely Buffalo check season right now, fall and Christmas. So I hope that you are able to use these techniques in your Tumblr designs. If you like the video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new videos. I do have some exciting news. We are now uploading videos three times a week. So we'll be uploading Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So make sure you come back on Thursday for a brand new video. Okay, I hope you enjoy. Let's go. We're going to be using 20 ounce skinny straight cups from Craft Haven for all three of our buffalo check methods. So I'm gonna prep these and paint them and we'll be ready for method number one. Method number one is the taping method. So I've painted my cup with Boreal Pink from Montana Colors and now we are ready to start taping off for our buffalo check. So first I'm going to take my ruler and my cup and hold them up against each other on my table so that I can get a straight line. I love doing this when I'm doing anything that needs to be straight up my cup. It really, really helps like start right and finish right. So I'm gonna just drag my pencil up the cup to make sure that I have a straight line. And this is going to ensure that my first piece of tape is laid down on my cup straight, which is going to ensure that my entire pattern is on there straight and that it's not gonna be a wonky buffalo check. So the first step to the taping method is laying down your tape vertically. So you're gonna put down your vertical lines. So I'm taking one piece of this tape and laying it right up against that pencil line that we just drew on our cup. I'm going to continue this around the entire cup and I'm going to use a piece of my tape to like space in between my stripes because you wanna tape every other, but you want everything to be the same width and the same size. So take a piece of that same tape you're using, put it in between and then place down your next stripe. And then you can just use that same piece of middle tape, you'll remove it and then put it on the other side and then just continue this around the entire cup. So you should be left with like a vertically striped cup at this point. You can use any size tape you like. Um, I'm using this really inexpensive tape from Amazon. It's a really good width and it's gonna give us a good pattern. So if you wanna use bigger tape, you'll have bigger shapes and less of the pattern. If you wanna use a smaller tape, you'll end up having more of the pattern. So your plaid will be smaller. The next step is to tape horizontally around the cup. So I'm taking the same tape and I'm starting at the very top rim of my cup and wrapping that tape around that top rim, just using the top rim as my guide. And then I'm going to add in another little spacer piece of tape. And we're going to tape every other line basically down the cup now horizontally. So we're repeating the same process. We're just going around the cup now. And you can start to see at this point, our plaid kind of starting to take shape. You can kind of start to see it in your head. Um, I love when things like you can see what's happening and you don't just feel crazy. I hope I'm not the only one. So I'm going to continue that all the way down our cup and we will be taped and ready to start glittering. For this pattern, I wanted to do kind of like a very soft and girly color scheme. So we're going to do a like rose gold and silver mix. So the four steps to your buffalo check is to start with one color. You're supposed to start with your darkest color first, um, but these colors are about the same like tone. So I started with the silver first, so I put number one and number four should be switched. But anyway, so you're going to go with your darkest color first, and then steps two and three are going to be a mix of your two colors. And then the last color should be your lightest color. So we're going to start with our silver pattern, our silver glitter, and we're going to use it just by itself. So I'm using this little brush and my regular Crystalac glitter glue, of course, and I'm just going to add some glue to each of these exposed squares that we have from when we taped off. And then I'm going to apply my silver glitter, which is brilliant from PDB, 
to all of those squares. I apply my glitter like every shape or every couple shapes, but if you wanted to you know, paint your glue on a row and go row by row, you can do that. Whatever you're comfortable with, I just wanted to apply the glitter kind of as I went, just so I can, I can see the glitter, really. There's no, no purpose. If you're using Mod Podge, it does dry a little bit more quickly than this Crystal Act glitter glue, so I would just keep that in mind and kind of glitter before it dries out. So once I've got all of my squares glittered, I'm going to remove my remaining horizontal pieces of tape. So we should be left with our vertical stripes still intact and our cup should look something like this. So now we're going to take step two of our glittering, which is a mix of our two colors. So I mix Brilliant, which is our silver, and Fierce from PDB, about a 50-50 mix into a medicine cup. And now I'm going to take my same glitter glue and paint all of my exposed pink sections on our cup now. So this is a little bit more, you have to be a little bit more careful because you don't have that tape to help keep your lines perfectly straight. So just be careful as you paint. Um, but yeah, you're going to fill in all of those exposed pink squares with our mix of glitter. Now in my list, I break up steps two and three like for your mixed glitter, but it's the same glitter that you're using. I just break them up because you remove your tape in between applications. So once you're done filling in all of those squares, we're going to remove all of our remaining tape. So there should be no tape on our cup and we should have a cup that looks something like this. You should have your painted like vertical stripes and then your checkered vertical stripes. So now what we're going to do is every other square with our mixed glitter. So I'm gonna let this sit aside and dry for at least two hours. And then we're ready to go back in with step three, which is still our glitter mix, but we're going to apply now the squares alternating with the mix that's already on there. So in between your two silver squares, you're going to apply another square for your mixed glitter. I hope this makes sense. I know it's kind of confusing, but once you like get it down in your head and you know how the pattern's supposed to go, this is really, really easy. <laughs> so hopefully it's making sense. Um, but you can see here, what I did was I have my two silver squares and I painted my glitter glue in between those two squares. You have to be really careful here because you don't have any tape to guide you and get your lines straight. So just take your time, go slow with this process um, and you'll glitter your mix in between. So then you'll be left with basically your pattern complete and you just have to go back in with your final color which should be your lightest color. So for us, that's going to be our rose gold, which is Fierce from PDB. Once I finished glittering, I did let this sit aside for about an hour. I didn't wait the full two hours for this to dry, mostly because I was impatient and I just wanted to do it. Um, if you can wait the full two hours, that would probably be ideal. So now what we're going to do is our final color, like I said, our rose gold, and we're just going to fill in any of those remaining plain pink squares that we have on our cup and I'm going to use fierce like I said from PDB and this is our rose gold color this pattern is very very subtle it doesn't quite pick up on camera you can definitely see the different like you can see the silver in each individual color a little bit better in person um, but it's a really beautiful subtle pattern so I really like how this pattern turned out um, once you're done glittering all of your plain pink squares, you're going to let this sit aside and dry. I left mine overnight. Um, don't forget to do the bottom of your cup. I did the bottom just with this plain rose gold. You can use your mix. You can use any of those glitter colors that you want to do the bottom, or you can not do the bottom at all. It's totally up to you, whatever you think is best. <laughs> so once I was done with that, like I said, I did let this sit aside overnight and fully dry. And here you can kind of see that the pattern is very, very subtle, but it's also so sparkly and you can really see it better in person. So really like that. Now moving on to method number two, which is similar to the taping method, except we're going to use a template from LB Creates. Um, you can buy these on her website and they're really, really easy to use. So I cut out the template of stencil vinyl. I bought the 20 ounce skinny straight template for the Craft Haven cup specifically. She makes them for all different kinds of cups. 
and I sized it, cut it out of stencil vinyl, and now I'm applying it to my cup. You guys have seen me do this a million times, so I'm just gonna get this on my cup, make sure I peel back my transfer tape and that everything is lined up correctly. And for this one, we're going to do the traditional black and white buffalo check. So for step one, we're going to do our darkest color, which is our black, and then our mix, and then we'll finish off with our white glitter. So what I'm going to do with this template is write out my pattern. And basically what you want is like your black and then your mix. And then I wrote it, I have it on the screen here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. You just want it to alternate and kind of almost be like a checkerboard pattern. So I'm going to tint my same glitter glue that I've been using this whole time. I'm going to tint it with some black acrylic paint from Arteza. And then I'm mixing together here my black and my white. I'm using Frost and Midnight from PDB. So we're going to start by doing just our black straight. Um, this tinted glitter glue did not work out, as you can see, it's not very tinted. So I just um, went in and I did it anyway. I ended up doing two coats of this black glitter. I don't typically like to do two coats of glitter, but I wanted this to really be like a true black. And since the tinted adhesive didn't really work out, I just ended up doing two coats of glitter. So once I had all of these squares filled in, I did let this sit aside and dry for the full two hours. And then I went back in and I did all of my second coat coverage. So I left the stencil on, I didn't remove any tape, didn't do anything, just let it dry. And now I'm going in, as you can see here, adding another layer of my glitter glue, just straight out of the bottle, I did not tint it. Um, and I'm gonna add a second coat of glitter to all of these. And you can totally see the difference. It actually looks black now, which is perfect. So now I'm going to tap off the excess and I did not let this dry before I went in for the next step because like I said, I'm impatient. If you have the time to let it dry, you totally can. Um, now I'm going in and I'm going to do our first round of our glitter mix of our black and white. So I'm going to peel away all of the stencils that I have labeled M. Now I did do this one kind of backwards. I took off the stencils next to the black sections when I should have taken them off in between the black sections vertically, but either way, it, it's totally fine. It will work out. So you should still have a solid horizontal line like in between each of your stripes. So here you'll have your squares um, that are white and I'm gonna go in with my tinted glitter glue again. I did add some more acrylic paint to this so it's a little bit darker. Um, and we're going to add now our glitter mix of our black and white to all of these white sections that we've got exposed here. Once we've got all those squares covered up, I'm going to tap off any excess, make sure we don't have any loose glitter just hanging out there. And now we're going to pull off the remainder of our M's. So we're going to go in between all of our black squares vertically now. So your mixed squares should be kind of like diagonal from each other. And then you should still have like a vertical line of the white stripe. So it should look like this. And now we're going to repeat the exact same process. We're going to go in with our tinted glitter glue and apply another round of our mixed black and white glitter. One thing I do like about the template method is that all of your squares are sized perfectly and they're a little bit bigger than at least the tape method size that I used. So you have less squares to fill in, which means that you get this done a whole lot faster. So I do like the sizing of these templates. So now that I've got everything applied except for my white glitter spots, I'm going to peel back all of my remaining stencil vinyl to expose those white squares, but I'm not going to glitter them yet. I'm going to remove all of this stencil vinyl and then I'm going to let this sit and dry overnight. Oh my gosh, look how pretty that is. Um, and then we'll deal with the rest of this tomorrow. So now moving on to method number three, which is the cheat way. We're going to use clear printable vinyl to kind of mimic the buffalo check pattern. So this is perfect if you just do not want to glitter all of those individual shapes. 
So we're going to start with a red base painted cup and I'm going to apply my glitter glue all over the entire surface of the cup and we're going to use Scorpion from PDB. It's the perfect Christmas red glitter. This is a fine cut of glitter. I prefer using a fine for this method, but you can totally use a chunky if that's what you would like to do. So I'm gonna just cover this entire cup with glitter and then I'm going to let it sit aside for two hours to dry and then we will seal it. So while we wait for the red glitter to dry, we're gonna go back to our pink buffalo check. This is our tape method. And I'm gonna seal this with three coats of clear gloss spray from Rust-Oleum to really seal that plaid pattern in. And then to seal our black and white template buffalo check, I'm actually going to go in and seal each square individually using the glitter glue. Because we're going to add white glitter next, I don't want the white glitter to be contaminated by this darker glitter. I want those white squares to really be a true white. So this takes a little bit of time to individually seal each square, but it ends up being totally worth it. Um, if you don't want to do this, you can totally spray seal how we did the other buffalo check, just with clear spray or whatever you would like to use. So I'm going to finish this up and then I'm going to let this sit and dry. You guessed it, the full two hours before we go on to do our white glitter of those white squares. I also decided to seal our red glitter with the same glitter glue. This is totally not necessary. After I started sealing this, I was like, what am I doing? Why am I sealing this? Because it's just one solid color of glitter. You don't have to seal it, but I did, whatever. So after the two hours when everything was dry, I went in with epoxy. I did 140 milliliters of epoxy. I mixed that up, a little extra ink epoxy, of course. And I'm going to apply that kind of dispersed amongst these three cups. So I started with my red cheat way cup, and now I'm moving into our pink and silver one. And you wanna make sure that you're not using too much epoxy, but also you wanna make sure you're using enough epoxy. You don't wanna be dragging your hand along this glitter to get it to move it should be pretty well sealed but you can never be too safe so just make sure that you have enough epoxy on there that you can kind of feel the glitter underneath but not so much that it's going to pool up and like drip and end up being a huge bubble so once i applied it to the pink cup i put on a brand new glove and i went in with my remaining amount of epoxy onto my black and white buffalo check make sure that you take your time with this go slow you don't want to contaminate anything. Once that epoxy cured, I was ready to move on to apply the buffalo check to my red cup. I did sand down the rim of the cup. The remaining surface, everything else except that top rim, is still shiny from epoxy. You don't want to put clear printable vinyl onto a dull sanded surface because it'll make your epoxy kind of look foggy and it won't be the finish you want. So just take the extra step, make sure that it is shiny before you put on your clear printable vinyl or your water slide. If you would prefer to use water slide instead of clear printable vinyl, you totally can. Um, I just don't like sealing water slide, but either one, you can totally, it's the same result. So I'm just going to apply this onto my cup how I would a regular piece of patterned vinyl. You guys have seen me do this a million times, uh, but what I did, I just used my scraper to help me scrape the printable vinyl onto my cup and then I went in with my craft knife and cut off the excess from the top rim and I trimmed off that little bit of excess too with my knife at a 45 degree angle and then I'm going to finish off the bottom if you have one of those edging tools you can definitely use that my edging tool that I have I've had forever is crap so I just cut it off with my knife but there's your pattern so here's what they all look like in the end we have our tape method right here and then we've got our template and then our sheet method over here so you can use any of these methods they all look beautiful in my opinion what you would do from here is go in with your next coats of epoxy sand everything down until it's smooth if you want to add a decal you can definitely do that but that's pretty much it that's how you achieve this buffalo check pattern i think my favorite is definitely the template method i just like the size of the pattern and my second favorite would definitely be the tape method i think the cheat way is beautiful but there's nothing like true glitter so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy it, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Check out the description box for a list of everything I used in this video. And make sure you come back on Thursday for a brand new video. Remember, we're uploading three times a week now. 
I am so excited to share more videos with you and I hope you love them. All right, I'll see you guys in my next video. Love you. Bye. Hey.